I think it's fair to say that on this channel we love PC gaming, but quite often we can find things are a little bit expensive. So today we're actually checking out something a little bit different, because this is a gaming laptop from Asus ROG that isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg. Maybe just an arm. They call this the ROG Strix G, and as you can clearly tell, I haven't actually taken this out of the box yet. So I'm certainly very keen to see what we have. Seriously cool, surprisingly quiet. Not words that anyone has ever used to describe me. This is a really loud bag. But loud bag aside, here we have our ROG laptop. And a massive thank you to Asus ROG and NVIDIA for actually reaching out to sponsor this video. Because as I say, I've been very keen to actually see just what you can get. Oh, there's no battery. I guess this is gonna be the most natural segue into talking about the power brick, which as you can clearly see, isn't small. I mean, it's about the size of my head, really. Okay, I mean, that's exaggerating. It's a little bit smaller, but obviously, as long as you've got a decent sized bag, chuck this in, you'll be fine. But because this actually supports, I think it's up to 90, might be 95 watts of USB-C charging, then you can just use your existing sort of high powered laptop or phone charger that you already have if you want to use this as a little bit more of a portable machine. But obviously when it comes to gaming, you're going to need this to give it all the juice it needs to pump those FPS. So let's give this thing some power then, shall we? And then do the honors. Oh, RGB keyboard. Of course, this is a gaming laptop. And it actually looks as if you've got an RGB bar down the bottom as well. You have two USBs on the right hand side. On the back, you've got loads of ventilation. And then on the side, you've got your power outlet, a gigabit ethernet, and then you've got HDMI 2.1, which is gonna be really useful if you wanna output 4K 120 to one of these new fancy monitors or TVs. Turn on narrator by pressing Windows and Control and Enter. I mean, it's a great feature, but it is interrupting me talking about the USB-C ports that we have on the left-hand side as well, two USB Type-Cs. This one also has Thunderbolt support. And then last, but certainly not least, your analog headphone slash headset jack for gaming audio on the go. Let's also have a quick look what's under the hood of this. So let's place it on top of our PC-centric mouse mat, available today, get yours at pccentric.store. And then let's proceed to grab ourselves a standard Philips crosshead, always nice to see, and let's start removing some screws. With all of those removed, the laptop should then just prise off like so. And then you'd be greeted with this internal laptop layer. So here we have our boot drive. This is our M.2. Obviously, if you do want to upgrade this to a larger capacity at a later date, you can do that. It's this one here. You can also do the same with your RAM. Obviously, the specification is going to vary depending on the SKU that you go for. But if you did want to upgrade this, then again, that's a very easy upgrade. We've got our Wi-Fi module under here. I guess you could upgrade this, but most people probably won't want to do that. This is your battery down here at the bottom. And this one is actually rated at 90 watt hours, which is pretty high. And then this bit at the top is for your GPU and CPU. CPU and all of the cooling that goes with it. I've taken the opportunity to set up not just one, but two of these ROG laptops. Let's play a game of Spot the Difference, shall we? One of these is that G16, and then the other is the SCAR16. And I mean, the two of them actually share quite a lot of similarities, really. I mean, the form factor is identical amongst the two, but if you look a little bit under the skin, you will start to notice a few differences. Some are a little bit more superficial, like there's less RGB on the G16 than there is on the SCAR, if that matters to you. Whilst others will make quite a big difference to your day-to-day -day gaming life, most notably really being with the displays, because whilst both of these are, I was gonna say 16 by nine, they're not actually, they're 16 by 10 with this very slim bezel, which means you actually get more screen real estate, which is fantastic, not only for playing games, but obviously doing work as well. But putting them side by side, you'd be hard pressed probably to notice on the overhead, but this is actually a 1600p screen, whereas this one is only 1080p. Whether this matters, it obviously depends on the spec of the system that you're going for, because obviously lower specs will find it harder to drive higher resolutions in the first place. But then also, if you're someone that does want to play games that are more multiplayer orientated, chances are you'll probably much prefer to play at 1080p with a higher frame rate anyway. And in this instance, I personally actually prefer to have a native 1080p screen because you don't have to worry about pixel scaling and things but then if you're sort of more about higher end settings and maybe ray tracing and just getting as much detail as possible then stepping up to something like the SCAR 16 obviously is going to make more sense especially by the way if you start to run into CPU bottlenecking you can just up the res of the screen and then you're sort of not leaving stuff on the table. Now obviously spec wise the 
SCAR is more expensive because it does have even higher specifications. But realistically, I think for most gamers, this is probably the sort of ballpark that you're going to want to look for anyway. And this actually packs an RTX 4080 inside this one with an i7 CPU, whereas this is a 4090 with an i9. But as I say, the more affordable options are sort of GeForce RTX 4050, 4060 territory in the G16. But anyway, enough talk, let's get on with the games. And let us kick off our tests with some single player titles, starting with some Ratchet and Clank. And avid viewers of the channel may notice that we're still on the same bit. I know, I'm not stuck, I just haven't picked this up, I've been playing a lot of Starfield. But this is obviously a PlayStation title that has been ported across, and this is at max settings without any ray tracing. We are using DLSS, I believe this is set to quality, and we're currently getting around about 145 FPS, which really isn't too shabby whatsoever. We're able to properly utilize this display. It's a really nice, vivid screen, actually, and having such slim bezels, and again, the extra bit of vertical resolution, I think really does help make it that little bit more immersive, makes the whole screen slightly bigger as well, and all in all, it's a great experience. If we turn on our ray tracing, then you'll see that we haven't actually lost a huge amount of FPS here, which is very impressive, as we're still hitting just under that 120 FPS mark, actually, with now about 110 to 125 FPS. But don't forget that this is an NVIDIA laptop, so because we have a 40 series GPU inside this, we can also go once more into the settings, and then find DLSS 3.5 frame generation and turn this on. And what this will do is to alternately render frames and then add like a AI generated frame in the middle and this can help to make your gameplay a little bit smoother and it will increase the frame rate but it can affect the latency. But here the tech's actually working really well because we're now getting anywhere between 150 to 170 FPS and our latency is still way under that 60 milliseconds that I personally would consider acceptable for a single player PC game. Before we move on to our next title though I do want to talk a little bit about thermals and acoustics. I mean here's your acoustic test. So, I mean, compared to a desktop, obviously it is louder, but actually the fans on this are a really quite nice frequency, so they're quite easy to ignore. I'd be happy to use this with speakers. Definitely headphones, you're not going to notice it. It's not one of those horrible, like, whiny and annoying laptops that I've used countless times before. And in terms of thermals, also very much under check. Bear in mind, this is a very high spec for this chassis. We're looking at around about 77 degrees on the GPU and 84 on the CPU. Let's move across to our next title though, some Starfield! And what you're seeing here is around about five hours or so into the game, so don't worry, no spoilers, but this is a more open area. Starfield is actually a game where you have quite a lot of variants. I noticed when I first tested this, we were getting like way higher FPS. But then obviously when you start to go into areas that are a bit more intense, it will start to drop. So I think this is probably a good indication of what you can expect. And we currently got this set to max settings at 1080p with DLSS set to quality. But this is actually also a game that does have DLSS frame generation. So let's have a look at the moment. Our PC latency is about 35 milliseconds and we've got 67 FPS. What will happen? if we turn this on. And now the game actually does feel a whole lot smoother and our frame rate has increased to around about 120, which is pretty darn cool. Latency has been affected, but still nothing that's gonna pose a problem whatsoever. Still feels really nice and smooth, around about 45 milliseconds of latency. So this is clearly gonna be the best way to play because you've got that nice sort of smooth visuals, but then also plenty of responsiveness as well. As this is one of the top end G16s though, with that RTX 4080, I probably wanna stress test this. So let's play my most recent favorite game, some Alan Wake 2. And as you can clearly see, this is definitely a very gritty, moody game. There's a lot of lighting involved here. This is currently set to maximum quality without any ray tracing enabled. And we're getting around about 120, 130 FPS. Again, this is gonna vary if you're in a more open area. You can probably expect near, a, I don't know, the 90, 95 FPS mark. It's gonna depend, obviously, when and where you are in the game. But I do want to turn some ray tracing on at the moment because while this is running at 1920 by 1200, we've clearly got some extra FPS in the tank. And this is definitely one of those games that does benefit from having some ray tracing. So let's turn it to medium. I mean, it definitely has dropped, but surprisingly, it's not actually the drop I expected as we're now currently sitting at around about 80 to 90 frames a second or so. And this is definitely one of those moody games that we've said where having that ray tracing will make such a big difference, actually. That is pretty darn cool, but again, we haven't actually turned DLSS 3 frame gen on. So let's try this. And then as you can clearly see, your frame rate will once again increase with now around about 130 to 140 FPS or so. 
and an overall smoother image that's definitely nicer to look at, but then still plenty of responsiveness with around about 52 milliseconds of latency. But let's move on now to more of a multiplayer title and the newest one in our test suite, some Payday 3. It probably doesn't take the most eagle-eyed viewer to notice that this is the tutorial. Apologies on that. I promise we will go into some multiplayer once I've actually played the game for a little bit. But in terms of performance, I mean, this is, again, running absolute max settings, DLSS, quality, and we're clearly getting way more FPS than we could ever really need, around about 150 to 300 FPS, depending on where you are in the game. But if we draw your attention to the top left of the screen, you will also see that we are getting a little bit of CPU bottlenecking. So this is one of those times where if you had a 1440p display, then you get pretty similar performance actually versus a 1080p, as essentially you can crank up uh, the graphics and use that to its uh, full potential really, rather than getting a little bit bottlenecked. I think for the money, you're definitely getting a lot of gaming laptop here, but I would like to reiterate that if you do go for one of the lower end specs, whilst we won't be getting the exact same performance, it does always depend on what you play, because if you're not so interested in like having ultra settings or ray tracing, then you can obviously save yourself a fair bit of money to buy one of the lower spec ones. But I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you make of the Strix G16? Please do let us know down in the comment section below. Smash this like button if you've enjoyed it. Get yourself subscribed. Current pricing on everything featured is located down below and we'll catch you in the next one.